Hi there, welcome to Wellness and Care by Lori. I'm with Gregory Nowak, and he is a life coach, and we live in Boca Raton, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I just, before we start, I just want to thank you subscribers and new subscribers for chiming in today. So let's get started. Let's go. All right, so tell me first how you got into life coaching, and what did you do previously before life coaching? Well, before life coaching, I was a marketing consultant and I still do some of that work. Um, <clears throat> I've been a life coach for a long time, but not officially, but, it, but I've really been doing it as a profession for about six years. Um, in work that I had years ago before as a marketing consultant, um, I worked in the radio industry in, uh, and I had a lot of different management positions and really saw myself in many cases with the people that worked for me as not just their manager, but kind of a mentor. And that carried on. And, uh, and then through some work that I did on myself, both with a therapist and with a couple of different life coaches, um, it just happened by happenstance. I knew some men. I was part of a men's group on Facebook and uh, a lot of men from all over the world. And they would be talk asking questions about dating, relationships, money, sex, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I would chime in and, and I was writing stuff on my own Facebook page about all of this. And one of the guys reached out to me once and just wanted to talk occasionally. And we did. And then he just said to me one day, he said, would you be my coach? And I said, sure. And it's just like so many things in life happen that way. Like you and I meeting just, yeah, and you I, know, I wanna, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, um, um, and so, I started doing it with him. Another guy reached out. Then as I wrote more about it, and then I changed my title on Facebook, and then more people reached out, and it was just men. And then after about a year and a half, a woman sent me a note saying, do you work with women? And I said, I haven't. And she said, would you work with me? And I said, sure. And now at least 50% of my clients, sometimes as many as two thirds of my clients are women. But before we go on more about you, I want you to tell viewers out there, what is life coaching? Because I know that in psychotherapy and psych, you know, psych, psych, uh, like any kind of psychology that is looking into the past, life coaching is forward. It, would you say that? I mean, how would definitely? You, yeah, well, there there certainly is. You know, look at I'm not a I don't have a license, mm -hmm. so I want to be very clear about that. Okay. I've done a lot of therapy work myself, a lot of inner child work. I've done shadow work, chakra work. I mean, I've done so much stuff. Um, so I learned a lot about how the past influences my life now. But I also, when I started working with a life coach, started to really uncover the energy that we express. And so the therapy helped me a lot with getting over the anger about, you know, my father or my mother or, you know, or, or somebody that bullied me in, in junior high school or something, you know, and that was really helpful, but, um, but there was still something missing. And I realized that I hadn't really stepped into my true self, my true essence. And through working with a life coach and not spending time on the past, but just on what is the truth in this moment, what is the truth mm -hmm. and trusting myself and my intuition in each moment and as i started to do that more and express that my life became so simple and and then i realized and people would tell me this that hadn't seen me in years you're just different you know and i was just more present so we have this energy that is you know, what I call and other people call, you know, our, our true essence, who we really are, our, you know, our authentic selves, some people may call it, where um, we're not thinking about what happened yesterday or what might happen tomorrow. We're just living in the moment. And as I started to experience more and more of that, the stuff in the past mm -hmm. and in the future, I realized that they're just illusions that we sometimes, and so we have this conditioning that all humans have, conditioning from our parents, from society, from culture, from teachers, from siblings, you know, from, um, 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 you know, from entertainment, 
all this stuff that we take on and it starts to control our lives. And we think we're supposed to behave a certain way right. and that this is the right way to say no to somebody. This is the right way to, um, this, this is the right way to, uh, um, behave in this certain setting or in this certain situation. And so many people become people pleasers and so many people can't say no and they don't trust themselves. Or if they do say no, it's a five minute no. Were you that type of person? Oh my gosh, totally, totally. It was like, you know, if you would have said to me, ask me, you know, like to do the podcast. Oh, I'd love to do a podcast. You know, I'm just really busy this week. You know, maybe I could do it some other time. You know, I don't want to let you down. I mean, I know I said that I might, but you know, and we have all of this explaining and defending that we do because we're afraid to say, no, no, uh, it's not for me. It's not for me. And the people pleasing doesn't really help actually help the other person. You know, um, it certainly doesn't help ourselves. So, um, but I found that in that energy in the moment, in that essence, in truth, in truth, well, in essence, there are only, in my opinion, two things that exist, and that is truth and love, which are one and the same. That's all that exists. In that moment, you can say anything. No. Yes. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to call this person. You don't know, even know why you're doing it, but you just do it. And the more that you trust yourself in the moment, Life just opens up. All these things that you couldn't imagine come to you because you're expressing your essence. So you're in a vibration that is inviting in what is best for you. And so many people are in that conditioned energy. And so there's all this, there, it's heavy, it's weighted, they have a furrowed brow, they're really serious, they're thinking things, overthinking things, yeah. and maybe I should do this and maybe I should do that. And the things that they really want to do they can't even get started because they might start for a day, but then that thinking comes in. Well, you know, it might cost too much. It might take so long. Um, I'll start it next Monday. Monday's a good day. Monday's a good day. Today's for, I'll start it on Monday. They don't. Or maybe they start it on Monday, but then they stop on Tuesday. And Okay, I'll start next week. You know, it's just all of that conditioned thinking. And so while going to the past can have some value in that. I found with the clients that I work with, many who haven't done any therapy at all, that when they start to trust themselves and when they start to say no, especially no at the beginning, mm -hmm. I say to my clients when they start working with me, you're going to say no to about 90% of the things coming up in the next few weeks in your life. You're not going to think you are, but you are. And sure enough, they do because they realize and they say to me, my gosh, I've been saying yes to everything. I, I don't know. I just... So they're not taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And while I think it's important to be of service to others and to help others, it's the old, you got to put your oxygen mask on first on the plane so that you can help those around you. Absolutely. So you got to take care of yourself first. So, you know, so basically, so that's the work that I do. I work with people one-on-one -on -one, and they all come to me and they're all from different parts of the world different experiences, but in most cases, it's all the same stuff. Really? It's the people pleasing. Okay. It's not being able to say no. Um, it's, uh, they're, they're mad at an ex. Yeah, they're, I was going to say that relationship. Sure. I mean, when you looked into yourself and found your love and truth and being in the moment, not being a pleaser, were you married at the time and did you divorce? After no, it was after a divorce that I really went down this okay, path that's what I was, of okay. the therapy okay. and the life coaching and all that stuff because okay. I was like, okay, what's going on here? And I just decided that, yeah, this is not working. This is not working. So I was willing, I got to the point where I would walk, I would walk through any wall to figure it out. There was, uh, there was nothing that was going to stop me from figuring this out because I was living my life for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it brought me to this place where I had, I'd had a job that I didn't like that paid me a lot of money, but it was not me expressing my essence. I had a marriage that had just ended. We had a seven year old daughter and having the upbringing that I had, I said to myself, 
the day she was born and the day that we decided to celebrate, to celebrate, to, to separate, I said to myself, which is a celebration. Yeah, well, it ended up being, and we handled it really well, yeah, and we're still really nice. friendly that's, towards each other. Because nice. we said to each other, she's not choosing this. So let's make this one of the top 10 divorces of all time. That was our motto. Mm -hmm. Whatever we need to do, whatever we need to do. Her mother, Natalie's 25 now. She's never heard me say a negative word about her mother, and I know it's the same way the other way around. So it was, okay, who am I now? Who am I going to be? What kind of relationship do I want? Um, you know, what does it mean to be a single father? <clears throat> what does it mean to be a man? And that was a really tough one for me because I did not have a good role model growing up with my father. So it was really understanding that, which sent me down all different paths to explore that. For and, people out there, excuse me, but if there's someone out there who's watching this and they're going through this turmoil and really wanting to find their truth. I know they can reach out to you. Mm -hmm. um, when is that, I mean, that moment that they, that it's like they can't do it for themselves anymore. They have to have someone kind of help them along the way. Um, is that what happened to you? Like it came to that point where you're like, you know what, I can't do this. I need to, I need to ask for help. And what could you say to someone out there who wants like a coach rather than a therapist or something else? Trust yourself. When you come yeah. across someone, yeah. whether you see them on social media, whether you know of a friend who's worked with a life coach or a therapist or whatever, ask them about it. Get in contact with that person mm -hmm. and trust yourself. Talk to that person. If it seems like it's aligned, do it. If it doesn't seem like it's aligned, just because it worked for the other person with that exactly. person doesn't mean it's going to work for you, then just say no. It's your gut and instinct. But, but start trusting yourself. When you come across mm -hmm. someone, you know, just say, just reach out. It, it's, you know, and that's the hardest thing to do is taking that first step. But when you take that first step <laughs> and you know, intuitively, right. you just know right. this is the right, right person, right. then you do it. I will tell you, it will be scary. It will be scary to make that first move. And then if you pick that person, because you have no idea what's going to happen. And for people that haven't done work on themselves, it's scary at first because they know, and they're not consciously thinking of it, but they know subconsciously the shit's going to come up. Oh yeah. They just know because they've been holding onto it for so long. And they literally, just by the act of reaching out, it starts to bubble up and they can feel it. And so some want to quit right then. You just keep going. You just keep going. Find somebody who you feel like you trust and that you know has something to offer you to help you work through all of this stuff that you've accumulated for all these years. So we're going to stop on this segment, but we're going to be right back. And um, we will have all of Gregory's information in the comment box. And I guess. Um, I just want you viewers, to, you know, to thank you for coming to this channel. And I so appreciate all the support. We'll be back with another segment. Thank you.